Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jeremiah Martinez, and we're here to discuss everything there is to know about fantasy football. And it is the, I think it's officially the last week of the fantasy football season. And I know it's a, I know it's a sad end. Uh, you know, it's a, it's pretty much over after this week, uh, you know, after, you know, Having, after, you know, talking about all these players that, you know, you should add and, you know, do all this and that. But, you know, it's, we're not done yet. You know, we're, we're not done yet. Uh, we got one more week of talking about, you know, who to start, who to sit and all that. You know, who to pick up. Um, pretty much one more week of in-season advice, advice. And, um, yeah, you know, let's get, uh, let's get started. Uh, you know, first, like always, and I'm always going to talk about the Monday Night Football game. And the Carolina Panthers defeated the Washington Redskins uh, last night, 26 to 15, uh, in a game that the Panthers looked like they were, they looked like the team that went on that Super Bowl run last season. Uh, for uh, fantasy purposes, you know, we do have a lot of really good fantasy performances. Uh, Cam Newton actually had a really good performance. Uh, you know, he had 300 yards passing and two touchdowns. Uh, he did have three carries, but he didn't get any yards off of those carries. Uh, but, you know, going to the Washington Redskins, you know, Kirk Cousins, he had 315 yards passing. Okay, it looks pretty good. But he didn't have any touchdowns, and he had one interception. So, overall, it just wasn't a good day for the Washington Redskins offense. Uh, to the rushers for both teams, you know, Jonathan Stewart, you know, he did have a pretty good day. He had 25 carries for 132 yards. And Kirk Cousins was the leading rusher for Washington. He had two carries for 11 yards. Robert Kelly, the starting running back, only had, he had nine carries for only eight yards and a touchdown. He did have a touchdown to save his day, but... He only had eight yards on nine carries, and that is pretty. That's that's dreadful. That's dreadful. The the Redskins they couldn't run the ball last night. They could not run the ball against this team. They only had a total of twenty nine rushing yards. The offense just wasn't clicking last night at all. You know, you had Kirk Cousins probably could have had you know a touchdown, but it was dropped by Vernon Davis. Uh, you know, Jordan Reed, he didn't really have a really good day. Uh, you know, he only had one reception for six yards. Uh, he did get ejected at the end of the third quarter uh, after a bonehead, pretty much a bonehead move. Uh, the leading receiver for Washington was Deshaun, Jacks Deshaun Jackson. He had seven receptions on 10 targets, 111 yards, no touchdowns. Pierre Garçon had just as many receptions. He had 11 targets. And 78 yards. So, you know, overall, the numbers do look good for the Washington Redskins. No receivers. I know Robert Kelly was even involved as well. You know, he did have 47 you know, re receiving yards. He did have four targets. So he didn't have much on the ground game, but he did have 47 yards through the air. As for the Carolina Panthers, 
Uh, Greg Olson was the leading, the leading receiver, uh, 85 yards on nine targets. He has six receptions. Tegan Jr., 64 yards on four receptions and one touchdown. Uh, he did have a target, so he was targeted heavily a lot in this game. Uh, you know, when as for Calvin Benjamin, he was shadowed by Josh Norman throughout the entire game. Uh, you know, he did have four targets, so Cam Newton wasn't really looking toward towards Norman's way the entire game. Uh, he Benjamin finished with 20 yards and two receptions, so it wasn't really a big you know day for the second year player for out of Florida State, uh, Calvin Benjamin. But, you know, moving forward to, you know, both of these teams here, uh, you know, Cam Newton is, uh, if you had, I think he's someone you can possibly, possibly start, uh, you know, for the fantasy championship this week. You know, they are playing, they are playing the Atlanta Falcons. So I do expect a really big day. You know, for, you know, the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton. And, you know, the Washington Redskins, you know, they are, they were in the hunt for a playoff spot. Uh, you know, they do need a lot of help. Uh, but they are playing the Chicago Bears. So, it, I can possibly see a really good day from the offensive players. You know, Deshaun Jackson, Kirk Cousins. I, I do expect they can potentially have a really good day against this uh against, you know, the Chicago Bears defense. But, you know, moving forward to other players this week. Uh, you know, this week's top performers, you know, there was, uh, there was a lot of uh, really notable performers this week. Uh, you know, the first uh, top performer, uh, you know, of the weekend was Devontae Freeman, the Atlanta Falcons running back. Uh, you know, he finished with 31.5 fantasy, uh, fantasy points. He did have 139 yards and three touchdowns against the worst defense in the league. And as, of course, I am talking about the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Brandon Cooks was on fire. You know, the New Orleans Saints were in a shootout against the Arizona Cardinals. And... Brandon Cooks finished for 186 yards and two touchdowns. So he was on fire throughout the whole game. And then his quarterback, Drew Brees, put on a tremendous show in Arizona. Uh, he actually finished with 389 yards and four touchdowns. So, yeah, he was putting on a show there at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Tempe, Arizona against the Cardinals. And LaShawn McCoy. Uh, he's been real. He's been a top five fantasy running back throughout the entire year, and he looks like he's on for a strong finish as well. He had 153 rushing yards and two touchdowns against the Cleveland Browns. And Ty Montgomery, the hybrid receiver running back, uh, he you know the Green Bay Packers look like they finally found the running back in Ty Montgomery, and he had a big day: 162 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Big day for Ty Montgomery there. And the Green Bay Packers as they defeated the Chicago Bears 30-27. to Ezekiel Elliott, uh, he did fin he had another big day, of course, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, 159 yards and a touchdown. Uh, finished with 24.8 fantasy points. And he looks like he's going on a strong finish there to end the year. And one of the top quarterbacks this week in fantasy was uh, someone that wasn't even probably on a lot of rosters. Uh, it was Matt Moore. Matt Moore of the Miami Dolphins. He was coming in relief for Ryan Tannehill. And he finished with, with 236 yards and four touchdowns. He literally torched this New York Jets defense. He torched the New York Jets defense and Miami just demolished the Jets. 34-13 on uh, Saturday, actually. They had a primetime Saturday game. And, you know, David Johnson, of course, he's always going to be, he's always going to be, you know, the top, one of the top running backs this year. Uh, you know, he finished with uh, 53 rushing yards and 55 receiving yards. So, you know, he was uh, the first player to have uh, 100 yards from scrimmage in each game for the first 14 games in the season. 
Uh, he is one. Of, he is in that category there, and he does had two touchdowns on the day. So good job for him. Uh, but you know that it concludes. Uh, you know this week's performers uh, for week fifteen. And you know when we come back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, I, I'm gonna I'm going to discuss a couple of players uh, if you should trust them or not. Uh, you know, AJ Green looks like he's returning this week, and I'm gonna talk about AJ Peterson's absolutely dreadful game uh, last uh, Sunday against the Colts. But uh, I'll be right back at the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. And uh, for, I want to talk about a couple players here who are pretty hard to trust here for the final week of the fantasy season. Uh, I know for some of you guys, this is a very important week. Uh, you have a lot of uh, writing, so to speak, to win your fantasy league. And... It was reported that AJ Green is slated to return this Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, he's officially, you know, he didn't. He was doubtful for Sunday's game against the Steelers, and you know he was. He's pro, he's going to play against the Texans this week uh, in Christmas Eve. So, you know, he it, it's tough to. It's tough to trust a player who is coming off a hamstring injury. And it's tough to it's tough to trust a player who who is in an offense that it hasn't been really producing a lot. Uh, you know, I think a better option to consider for the Cincinnati Bengals uh, you know, receiving core is Tyler Boyd. Um, it's not really an ideal matchup, though, because, you know, it is a Pittsburgh Steelers. They haven't given up 300 passing yards since week three. So it's a pretty tough matchup for A.J. Green if he does decide to return and, uh, uh, you know, against the Houston Texans. I uh, know. Well, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals did play against the Pittsburgh Steelers this past Sunday. Uh, they were winning 20 to 20 uh, they're winning by double digits so to speak and then Pittsburgh Steelers you know they just came back so you know it was a tough matchup for pretty much everyone on that Cincinnati Bengals team and this Sunday looking forward to the Texans you know they're they're a pretty good defense you know they've been one of the more underrated defenses this league because you know they're always on the field I know they they have Brock Osweiler as quarterback. He wasn't producing as much, uh, but you know that can all change now. It is Tom Savage's first start, so it is so to speak that maybe I would just hold off on AJ Green for now. But he does deserve to be on a roster, so to speak. I uh, so you know he it's tough because you know hamstring injuries sometimes don't really heal well as you thought. Uh, you know, if he if he decides to come back uh, before he's ready, what's to say AJ Green is not ready right now? Uh, you know, it can be really dangerous for AJ Green. He can practically completely tear a muscle there. So, you know, I would just hold off on AJ Green, and you know, going by you know his stat line, he is he is 
close. He, I think he's like 37 yards away from a thousand yard season. So maybe that plays a part in him coming back. But you know, I just it's tough to it's tough to trust AJ Green right now with you know a nagging injury. Uh, pretty pretty tough matchup. Uh, pretty much, you know, the Bengals, I'm surprised that the Bengals are bringing him back in the season when they're not even in playoff contention. If the Bengals were in playoff contention, I can probably see why they're bringing him in there. But, you know, I just don't, I just, I just can't trust AJ Green. I think, I do think Brandon LaFell and Tyler Boyd are still better options at this point. Uh, but I just think it's best to, you know, sit AJ Green for those that do have him on the roster there. And, you know, another player that, you know, that made headlines this uh, past weekend was Adrian Peterson, the Minnesota Vikings running back. The Minnesota Vikings absolutely got torched by the Indianapolis Colts this past Sunday, 34-6. to And Adrian Peterson decided to come back because Minnesota Vikings were still in playoff contention, but they, they look like they're on the brink of elimination right now. Adrian Peterson, practically, he didn't do a whole lot. He only got 22 yards on six carries. Uh, and I knew when Adrian Peterson announced his return this week, I I didn't think it was going to go so well. Uh, you know, he, he was averaging, he was averaging like 1.6 yards a carry before Sunday. Uh, he did average 3.7, but, you know, he's... He just hasn't, maybe he just doesn't have it anymore, you know? You know, and is he going to, is he going to co? is he going to come back to being the fantasy running back that we were used to accustomed to seeing? And, you know, he is, he, you know, if, let's just say the Vikings are eliminated from playoff contention, uh, this this week. Is he going to play against the Chicago Bears to win the season? So I, I just don't think so. I don't think so at all one bit. And you no, know, looking at these that the backfield situation for the Minnesota Vikings, you know, Matt Asiata, you know, it's just he looks like he's he looks more of a fullback. Uh Jeremy McKinnon just hasn't got it done. Uh, they probably have one of the worst running games in all of the all of football. Uh, so you know, we you know the Vikings thought maybe Peterson can give him the extra boost to potentially contend for a playoff spot. And I just don't think you know it's going to. I just don't think Adrian Peterson is someone um, that you can trust in your lineup moving forward. But you know he does need to be on the roster, and it's tough for me to see. If Adrian Peterson is going to be highly drafted next year, uh, you know, because he was he was drafted as a first or second round pick. I don't think he's going to be drafted in any of those rounds. I think he's going to be probably maybe a fifth or sixth rounder, and that that is tough, you know. <laughs> and he just hasn't. Adrian Peterson hasn't got it done. And earlier this season, I did say, I did talk about Adrian Peterson is if he's going to be a, is he done as a fantasy running back? If he's done as a relevant fantasy running back, that is. And I said he was completely done. And I was right. He just, he just doesn't have it anymore. You know, it's tough to come back and play with knee injuries when you get to a certain age. You know, I think we keep forgetting that Adrian Peterson is 31 years old. And running backs don't age well in the NFL. So I do still stick by my statement that Adrian Peterson is done as a relevant fantasy running back. Sure, he can maybe be a good player, but for fantasy purposes, I I just can't trust him in the lineup. So I would just I would just bench him uh this week and you know moving forward to next season. I don't I don't trust Adrian Peterson either, you know. I don't trust him next year. Um, I think he's someone that I would probably try to stay away from. And, you know, he just he just doesn't, he just doesn't, I don't think he just has it anymore. But, you know, that, uh, that can, I'm going to go to the second break now. And I'm going to get into this week's top 
waiver wire pickups. That's right. One more week, guys. Waiver wire pickups. And I will have uh, some names for you guys to potentially add to take you to Title Town this week. Uh, but I will have those names for you when we come back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. It is time to get into some top web wire pickups of the week. Uh, yeah, we're not done with that, guys. Uh, this is the final week of this fantasy football season. So this is the final Waiver wire pickups that I will have this year and is the most important one. So we're going to end this off with the bank. All right. Uh, my first name that I think that should get some consideration in the waiver wire is uh, Robbie Anderson, the New York Jets receiver. Uh, he's been a really big part of this offense ever since Bryce Petty has been, you know, the quarterback for the Jets. Ever since, you know, he got into that game. Uh, against the Indianapolis Colts, uh, he 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 he's been on fire. Uh, he's been highly involved in this offense, and he's someone that uh, looks like he's about to also be involved as well uh, moving forward to end the year. And you know, since since that uh, since that time when Bryce Petty entered the game for the Jets against the Indianapolis Colts on that Monday night, he's been on fire. He has at least sixty yards or more. Uh, against the Colts in uh, three weeks ago, he did have 61 yards on 12 targets and one touchdown. And then against the 49ers the week after, uh, he did have 99 yards on 11 targets. And then just this past weekend against the Miami Dolphins, he had 80 yards and a touchdown uh, on six targets. So he looks like he's about to be Someone that looks like that's going to be highly involved in the offense there. And I do like him for the final week of the season. And I think he's someone that needs to be taken seriously on the waiver wire pickups. And I think he can possibly maybe, you know, emerge as a uh, as a very viable receiver next season. It depends on who is the quarterback for the Jets, though. If Bryce Petty is the quarterback next year for the Jets, then I think Robbie Anderson is someone that uh, is going to be very valuable in the draft next year. And as for the second name on my list, uh, you know, I got Tyler Lockett here. Uh, you know, he's playing against, uh, you know, he he played against the Los Angeles Rams last Thursday night. Uh, he had practically his best game as a, as a pro. Uh, you know, he had 130 receiving yards on nine targets and a touchdown. And, you know, this was probably his second best game of the year. Uh, this was his best game as a receiver. But as an overall football player, as a professional football player, this is his second best game. He did have over 100 yards against the Carolina Panthers. You know, remember, he had 63 yards in that game. And he had a 75-yard rushing score. So, he, he looks like he's finally healthy now. He looks like he's finally involved in the offense. And I expect him to finish big. I expect him to finish big. You know, he is playing against the Arizona Cardinals, uh, some, uh, a team that got absolutely torched by the New Orleans Saints. And I do like his involvement here with for the Seahawks. And I think he's someone that needs to be added. And next year, I do think Tyler Lockett is going to be a very, I think he's going to be someone that's very valuable. I actually like Ty Tyler Lockett moving to next year. And, I think he's someone that needs to be taken seriously this weekend against the Arizona Cardinals. And another player I have on my top waiver wire, waiver wire list is uh, Eli Rogers. 
Uh, you know, he did have 75 yards and a score against the Cincinnati Bengals this past Sunday. Uh, and he looks like he is back to being involved in this offense. Uh, but the reason why I do think, you know, he's someone that needs to be added is because he's playing against the Ravens at home. When he played against the Ravens in November, early November, that is, he had 103 yards on 10 targets. So he's playing that team at home where Big Ben is probably at his best. I think that's a I think Eli Rogers is slated to have a big day. So I know I would have to say maybe he can have a bigger day, you know, this weekend against the Baltimore Ravens. And as for my second uh as for my second to last uh, waiver wire pickup of the week. Uh, Cameron Meredith of the Chicago Bears. Yes, you know he's been uh, he's been really involved in this offense uh, lately for the Bears, and he's been a really he's been a reliable target for Matt Barkley. Uh, ever since you know he had that start against the 49ers. Well, against the Detroit Lions two weeks ago, he has 72 yards and a touchdown. This past Sunday against the Green Bay Packers. He had 104 yards and 13 targets. Uh, you know, he is someone that he's someone that looks like he has a really good chemistry with Matt Barkley. Um, I know he earlier in the year when Brian Hoyer was the running back, uh, it looks like he was going to be it looks like he was he had really good chemistry with with uh, Brian Hoyer there, and it looked like it was very questionable. Uh, if he was going to pan out well with Jay Cutler, well, Jay Cutler got hurt, and it looks like the it looks like the quarterback there, Matt Barkley, has he really likes throwing it to Cameron Meredith there, and you know he's playing against a Washington Redskins defense that uh, uh, got absolutely torched by Ted Ginn and Greg Olson, so I do think he is someone that needs to be. You know, added. Uh, I'm not sure who, if he, Josh Norman is going to cover him or not. Uh, but if Josh Norman does cover Cameron Meredith, um, I don't know if he's going to have as big as a day. I think he should. Uh, but I do think he's someone that needs to be added right now. And as for my last name on the list, uh, I got Hunter Henry, the tight end for the San Diego Chargers. Yeah, he had a uh, he had a pretty solid fantasy day against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, he had 37 yards and a touchdown. That was his seventh touchdown of the year. So he was someone that has emerged as a red zone target for Phil Rivers. He's in an offense that is uh, a highly, uh, they pass a lot. Uh, he's in a highly rated passing offense because, uh, you know, the running game kind of really did take a hit with Melvin Gordon there. Uh, he, I expect him to have a big day against the Cleveland Browns and, you know, the theme that we had going on this whole season is if the player is going against the 49ers and the Cleveland Browns, you got to start him. So he is going against a very soft Cleveland Browns defense. I expect him to have a really big day this weekend against the Cleveland Browns. And uh, that concludes the show, guys. That concludes the show. And i like to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a show on Friday, actually. Uh, I think we're actually off for the holiday, uh, but we should be back on Tuesday. And I'm not sure if we're going to have a second show next week. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I just want to say good luck to you guys this week, you know, in your uh, in your leagues. Uh, hopefully you get these players to start uh, in your leagues. And, yeah, you know, that concludes the show. And, you know, you can always follow the show on a variety of platforms. I uh, you know we're always on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, and on the website gsmcpodcast.com. You can also follow the show on Twitter at gsmc underscore f football and on Instagram at the same handle. That's at gsmc underscore f football. And you can also like the show on Facebook at the Golden State Media Concepts F- Fantasy Football Podcast. And as always, I'm Jeremiah Martinez, and I will see you guys next week if we don't have a show on Friday. Good luck, guys. Good luck in your leagues.